How's it going, Critter family? I hope you all are doing well. Little Hermes is here to say hello. Hello, you want to <laughs> He's just wandering. So today we are looking at a video by the Hyper Pup Dog Training. Stop leash pulling within minutes. So this is a red flag because I'm not a five minute trainer. Typically learning behavior should not be just done in five minutes because it takes a lot longer than that. Um, if you have a trainer that does teach this way, then chances are they're using a certain tool um, or a certain method that being more punitive, punishment, compulsion, ag uh, aggressive techniques, whatever you want to call it. Night, Hermes. So Hermes went back to sleep, um, but we're going to get started with this guy from the Hyper Pup Dog Training. Hey everybody, it's Armando at the Hyper Pup. So what we're going to do right now is kind of introduce you to a dog who is a little pulley on the leash, slightly distracted, but we're going to take her from pulley and distracted to more focused and more attentive using just a simple leash and the prong collar. Okay. Simple intro. So we know exactly how he's going to be training this dog. If they're only a little bit pulley, I don't care if your dog is hardcore pulley and super distracted, you don't need to use a prong collar. I use a simple harness, um, a whether you call it a freedom harness, I like the Rabi Goo, I think it's called Rabi Goo, um, R-A-B-I, I I think it's G-O-O, -O, or it might be Rabi something else, um, Rabi Go or something, but it, it's basically just, you know, a, a nice padded front, it's a padded harness, it has free shoulder movement, so it's like an X that goes around the back, um, it has some clips here and it has a clip here. So you have a lot of adjustability and it has a clip on the front and it has a clip on the back. I teach people with even the hardest pulling dogs that I can take their, their leash, clip it on the back of them and work with them in, I don't know, a, a shorter, a short ish period of time to show them an example that they can get their dog to walk nice and loose on a loose leash. Obviously in a controlled environment, it's going to work better. I don't tell them that you're going to be able to get away with this in a distracted environment or you go outside and your dog's going to walk fine. But I, I can teach them just like I taught my Sheba, like I teach anybody else. There's a video in the description below. There's a link to a video showing how I taught my Sheba to walk loose on leash, just like I teach any other dog that I work with. It takes time. It's certainly not within minutes that you're going to stop this, um, but you don't have to rely on any corrective tools such as a prong collar um, or a slip lead or a, a, a choke chain or any kind of, you know, other gimmicky collar. If you end up using a prong collar or any of these other collars, you know, prong collar, e-collar, shot collar, star mark or choke chain or slip lead or anything like that, in this case, a prong collar, you're going to be relying on this collar the rest of the dog's life or the, as long as you have the dog because you're not going to be teaching the dog what to do. You're just teaching them to avoid punishment by having a painful metal prong, multiple metal prongs digging into their neck. A lot of people like to say, oh, we have points of pressure, you know, surface area points of pressure. We have uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty, twenty points of pressure. But each of those is maybe two or three millimeters wide. So you're, you're on a bed of nails, you know, it's like having a bunch of pens or pins in your neck versus a nice wide flat buckle collar. Um, you know, just for example, for example, you're going to have a lot less surface area with this piece of cord than you would if you had something that was two or three inches wide. That's a lot more surface area, a lot of surface pressure versus a very small surface pressure, which is why these tools work. If you're going to use any tool on your animal, you should ask yourself, how does it work and why does it work? So I think she's walking on just a regular flat buckle collar, which is why she's able to pull so much. It doesn't hurt. So he's showing this that, you know, he's not giving her any direction at all here either. He's letting her kind of dawdle around, which is totally fine, but he's going to make it worse. Like they always do in commercials where they have it, the black and white and like, oh, you can't chop this tomato. And the person's clearly like just smushing into the tomato with the dull knife. Hi, baby carrot. Yeah, they wanted to come and play, <laughs> but they're clearly just smushing into it with a dull knife and they say like, oh, look at this is the before and then this is the after with the fancy whatever tool I'm trying to sell you on, um, just like this. So it's all a gimmick. 
The prong collar works because it hurts and it digs into the dog's throat. It can be damaging to the trachea, to blood vessels, to the esophagus, um, to the thyroid glands, salivary glands. There's blood flow. It's very sensitive there. That's how it works is it works by causing pain and your dog doesn't want to pull against it. If you put it on yourself or your child, God forbid, don't actually do that. Um, you would probably be in jail for, you know, child abuse or child negligence if you put a prong collar around their wrist you know those little ch children leashes if you put that on them and you know kept them from from pulling and running away from you like that so it's no different than with a dog ouch all right so this is three-year-old sunny sunny came in yesterday for a board and train Oh, lovely. So we have a board and train for a, in, an ignorant owner that doesn't want to take the time it takes to teach their own dog. They've taught it all these bad manners. So then they leave it to some other random Joe like this guy to teach them to put a tool on their dog, waste thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars to have somebody else train their dog. They have no idea what is going on, how how much or little the dog is being mistreated. Um, and and they just they don't care. And And ignorance is not, you know, I don't I don't buy into the whole oh they didn't know better no you you should know better by now i mean you don't send your dog to go get trained you are the one that needs the training you don't send your your dog to to a trainer just to get trained when then they come back perfect otherwise the training's gonna go out the window i have anything along the lines of serious behavioral issues but she's a bit of a polar as you can see i wouldn't even say that she's not really distracted because there's really nothing going on around here this is just an empty parking lot People come in here to do all sorts of, who knows what, shady stuff. And then we've got a space back here where they, the city or the town does uh, bus tests, performs bus tests for the bus drivers. But imagine if you took her somewhere else, maybe a park setting, downtown. So why isn't he training in a park really setting then? That's when you're going to see the pulling and full force. Well, that's why you practice when your dog is below threshold. You don't take them... You don't take a kid to Disneyland and then smack them in the, in the, on the hand every time they get their math problem wrong. You don't take them to, you know, out to recess and then practice teaching them algebra there. You teach them when they're below threshold, when they're in an environment that's controlled that they can actually learn in. You don't just take them out somewhere and then correct and abuse them until they, they listen. That's not going to teach them anything other than punitive methods. And here's the thing with some pulley dogs. They'll pull forever. They don't care. I've seen dogs kind of almost choke themselves out. I have seen dogs vomit from the pulling. They also pull that hard on prong collars. They pull that hard. I've seen it firsthand. They pull that hard to where they're choking themselves on a prong collar, on a choke chain, on any other device that you put on them, on a tiny little slip lead as thin as this. They are pulling and choking themselves because, mainly because the collar placement is either too low or it's not coming, it, it, it's just causing the dog to go into fight or flight. It's called the opposition reflex. The reason why the dog is pulling on a collar or a harness or any other tool, harnesses don't create pulling. Pulling is a learned behavior. Harnesses just, or you know, the dog learns to pull in a harness just like they learn to pull in a prong collar. And they learn to ignore it and they learn to ignore pressure. It's the opposition reflex. If you were standing on the edge of a cliff and I go to push you, your instant reaction without thinking, your reflex of survival is to fight me pushing you. That's opposition reflex. You fight against the pressure being put on you. Same with the dog. They feel pressure. They move into pressure. When they feel a tight leash on them or something pulling them back, they fight it. They're trying to pull to get away from it. They don't realize if you teach them correctly and, and appropriately, not using a prong collar, relying on that, but you know, I teach the same thing in a harness, that if they move with the pressure, if I use a finger's worth to get them to move with me, that pressure gets loosened on the leash. And I literally use as light as I need to on a harness that clips in the back, as you'll see if you look at the video that I show you, that I use as little pressure as I need to. If this dog is pulling forward, and I were on this side, I would apply a little bit of pressure on the leash to the left side of this dog. So if the dog is going this way, I'm gonna move it this way. I'm gonna pull the dog this way. So they fall off balance. I'm trying to take them off balance so that it makes it easier for them to give into the pressure. And then I can loosen that leash and then it's gonna be a two-step dance. And I teach that dog, hey, when you listen to this light pressure, 
when you listen to this light pressure, I'm teaching you basically to listen to a whisper. You know, the softer you are with your dog, the softer they'll listen. If I'm just over here and popping and jerking all the time, they're going to learn to ignore that. Because they don't care. It will hurt and impact their trachea, and they will just like kind of... And pull and pull because and they pull don't it. know what else to do. They're in fight or flight. It's the opposition reflex. You have to teach them not to pull. They they just don't know not to. You, you, you teach them to pull unknowingly. You can teach them how not to pull knowingly. Again, they kind of have to spit it out. So what we're looking to do here is create some attentiveness, some attention, some focus on us. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a prong collar on her. Herm Springer, probably a 2.25. I could go with That's the millimeter size on the, the prong collar. So the smaller it is, the 2.25 versus like a 3 or versus a 4 or 5 or I don't know what size they come in. And that shows how small the tip of it is. So that way it's it's more painful when it digs into the dog's neck. They you might think that, oh, bigger is is you know more you know more aggressive. It's actually a little bit more surface area than the tiny little pin prick they're getting from this damp cron collar. With the 3.0. We've had well, one I'd ad so want. far. And then we're gonna condition it for her, which is a two-step process. No, so no, no. They they normally don't. This is just a bunch of baloney. They're gonna probably have you know Put the prong collar on they try to use the prong collar with the treats and say make it a positive but then they end with the treats and then all they ever have is the prong collar the rest of the dog's life so this is just a a, a waste of everybody's time it, it's it's totally nonsense if you're going to be using the treats it's all you need to use you don't need to use the prong collar i when i'm teaching loose leash walking i don't even use treats most of the time if i'm trying to get their attention that's one thing that's that's different we're working on reactivity but if I am walking them on, if we're working on loose leash walking, I use the rest of the walk as the dog's real life reward. They get to sniff. If we have a goal that we're, you know, from this corner here and we're trying to get over here um, and they want to sniff a bush or whatnot, say there's a bush over here or they want to go from this point here to this tree over here, that's my goal post. And we're going to walk gently and do our two-step dance as they pull. I stop moving. I gently apply pressure to the left or the right side of their body, get them off balance just a bit. They give me one step in my direction and I loosen that leash. And then we keep doing that until they can walk gently up to that tree and that sniffing is their reward. They can sniff it as long as they want to. And I've had dogs where it took 25 minutes to get from their front door to their mailbox, which is the average distance, maybe from this guy to this this tree. But you know what? That was mental stimulation for them. The dog learned a lot. They were bonding a lot. It made the person patient. It taught the dog to give into pressure. So in other instances, they have their, their leash, you know, is tight and it's dragging and it gets caught on something. They're not going to kill themselves trying to save themselves. They'll say, oh, I'm caught on something. Let me just calm down because I've been conditioned appropriately to not fight when I feel pressure, give into it and it goes away. You teach them to think for themselves. Condition the, co the collar to her. In other words, we're gonna make her kind of more comfortable, more understanding of how to turn on the pressure. Yeah, I know, so that's one not. One of the first things that we wanna start doing is, I'm gonna start giving her a little bit of pressure. You're gonna pop there. her. All right, sorry, Armies and baby were, <laughs> were acting rambunctious, so back to it very light condition i like to really go so he's not even thing. using treats he's just popping her with it it's minimally invasive way no to be the most minimally invasive you wouldn't have a prong collar on her you would have an actual education and understand how this works and the dog is showing more and more stress signals the longer we're out here and the more he works with this instead of just immediately cranking her into a correction we will get there she's pulling necessary. Oh, if necessary, because you are ignorant, you don't know how to train a dog, so you rely on metal prong collars to dig into a dog's throat, damage their trachea, their thyroid, which you're aware of, but you're going to pop and crank and yank and crank if necessary because you failed the dog. Okay. May not be. We'll see. We'll play it out. Every dog is different. so you don't She's still pulling and ignoring you. Immediately with each individual you don't need to go hardcore, period. You're a dummy, and you're a dangerous man who's spreading dangerous information. No matter what you see on YouTube. You can start off easy, gradually, see how your dog responds to that, take your dog's feedback, and then move and bounce off of that. 
So she's still ignoring him. Ow, 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 ow. Keep that tension going. So what worked was he moved forward and twisted her this way. So she gives in. You can do that with a flat collar. You don't need it with a prong collar. Ouch. Good. Now she's trying to stay away from him because she doesn't have any positive association association with him. She doesn't care about your pet now or you your can pat. Reward with food if you had any, or you can praise. No, praise doesn't do diddly squat for a dog. Maybe for a golden, but a lot of dogs don't give a shit about your praise. No pressure. Good. She's avoiding him. Lip lick, lip lick. He's not telling her anything. Ouch. Ouch. And the longer he lets the leash go, the more leverage he has. So the more leverage you have, the more leash you have, that's that much more power you have. A stronger correction, if you will. So if he had her on one foot of leash, one pop isn't going to be a whole lot versus six feet. He has, you know, it's one foot of pressure, one foot of leash worth of pressure times six. She doesn't care about your padding, or she might because she's now in an abusive relationship where, you know, oh, I just hurt you with the neck, you know, or I'm, I'm going to pop you, I'm going to yank and crank on you, but, oh, but I love you. Here, let me come give you a pat because she's a gold retriever. We actually want her to be a little distracted right now. Here, we're going to stop a little pressure. Ouch. Yes. You're just dragging her around. You're not teaching her anything. You see, there's no correction there. There's no pop as of yet. Dude, she's constantly getting corrected. Every time this leash gets tight, it's a constant correction. You're an idiot if you think otherwise. And you're just straight up lying to the public. Because I'm sure he knows better. I want her to understand. Ow! Right there. Dragging. Every time there's pressure, it's a correction. And if this is as tight as most people make it, it's a constant correction. And then it's even more of a correction when they pull on it and put pressure on it. Because they put these on so damn tight on the dog that it's constantly trying to take off their head. You know, if they think that it's the dog actually believes like humans try to say it's like a mother's bite. Uh, uh, first of all, this dog is not around any other dog. So it would never associate that as that. It wouldn't associate you as a dog because they know you're not a dog. You're a two legged primate and they are a four legged qua uh, they're a quadruped cane it you know whatever the, the mother's teeth are not all the way around the throat all the way around the back of the neck a mother's teeth are not metal and a mother dog would not be correcting this dog it's just I don't want nonsense her to fight it. i want her to kind of get, learn to give into it and that when she gives you can make it easier on her pressure? ouch yes you can make it easier on her by not using any of this because she's learning to fight it more than the flat collar because you don't know what you're doing because you're using a prong collar. You don't have any education. Ouch. Ouch. Pressure. Ouch. Pressure. Now you're just going to teach her to just ignore it and just be drug around. Also, I don't know how hot it is out there. You're on black pavement. This dog looks like she's very, you know, her coat is pretty matted. She might be overweight. I can't tell if that's all the coat. So she could be very hot now. She could be burning her pads. We don't know. I don't know what the temperature is outside. And There's I'm no water, no shade available for dog, her. But you can easily just, especially if you have a, a large field ouch, like this, you ouch. just walk around with the dog. Ouch. She's Pressure. fighting it, fighting it, fighting yeah, it. She's out. got that tension on the leash, but when she releases that tension... That's her reward. That's how this works with him when using pressure and release. The pro you know, appropriate way to use pressure... Uh, the appropriate way that I use pressure and release is not using any painful device. It is teaching them, yes, you feel pressure. If I'm pulling this shirt here, I feel pressure on this side of my body. If I give in to that pressure, it stops pulling on me. It goes away. If I have my hand here, just resting against my neck, I'm not even, you know, I'm not shoving into it. I'm just resting against my neck. The more I press into it, if I go and follow it, it goes away. You can roll her in and praise. She doesn't care. Let's take a little stroll. This poor dog. No, there's there's no paying attention to him at all. No bond. No anything. Just a stressed out, hot, fearful dog who's in discomfort at the least and pain at the most with this damn prong collar and this loser who is attached to her. Now, I'm sure he's being extra nice in front of the camera. 
I'm sure he would give her pops immediately off camera. Maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know what people do off camera. Now I'm going to switch things up. Now I'm going to go to what I would do as a phase two exercise. I'm going to pop her. I'm going to find a straight path and I'm going to go back and forth with her. Stress you on? I'm going to give her the opportunity to get distracted. So he can pop her. He gives them the opportunity to fail, which means he has failed the dog. He doesn't know what he's doing. So he allows the dog to, to just exist so he can punish it because this is somehow punishing an animal or punishing someone else or somehow correcting someone else is always, you know, seems more rewarding to the majority of people than giving them praise. Correction seems to be more rewarding to the, to, to, for, in this case, for him, the corrector, um, is more rewarding to correct the, the correctee or the patient, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, versus rewarding them for doing something right. The dog doesn't know they're doing anything wrong. So he's going to turn, he's going to hide, he's going to turn around at, on, you know, on a dime and the dog's not going to follow him because they have, he hasn't taught the dog to actually care about him at all. And then he's going to pop the dog. And if she does, I'm going to move and I'm going to start to increase the little pressure and correction. The little pressure, the pop on the prong collar. Because I'm a dummy and I don't know what the hell else I'm doing. It's a bit. He's had two ads so far. Ouch. He's not even trying to talk to the dog. The dog, you know, he's been dawdling around here. Now he just randomly switches it up. And the dog has no idea what to expect. He's not talking to her. He's not trying to, you know, communicate and actually let her know ahead of time. Hey, come here. Walk backwards. Try any kind of way to, to really get her attention on him and make any kind of a positive association with him. Slave. She's the slave. He's the slave driver. That's when I'm going to make an about face. So then all these people are always obsessed with heel, 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 heel. All they ever want is for the dog to walk right next to them because they're so obsessed with control. I don't care where the dog is. When they're walking around me, they can walk in front of me, behind me, on my shoulders getting a piggyback ride. I don't care. As long as they're not pulling me and they're not trying to, you know, they're not lagging behind because they're, they're you know, if they're lagging behind that much, then we got to figure out what's going on. Um, but we, I don't care where they are as long as they're not being a crazy dog. Ouch, ouch. Lip lick. Uh, notice where I place my leash. Slave, slave my driver. Loop here. I don't want to wrap this Master, up. slave yes. relationship. He Because he wants the leverage of the leash. I've got my thumb through the Tight. loop. And this is my, my center of power, so to speak. Yeah, so he has all the power he can to correct this poor dog. If It's like basically a silverback gorilla with a 90-pound person on their hands and knees compared to a, a silverback gorilla. I'm not calling him a gorilla. I'm saying that would be the comparison between the, the height and the weight difference between a person and this person and this dog. And if we had the same collar on, if he were in that position, then you would have, I don't know, a giraffe or something as tall as that, um, you know, to yank and crank on his neck and see how he likes it and see if he thinks it's just a small pop or a small, tiny correction, a little correction. He doesn't even try to talk to her. Ouch. Slave driver, slave. Now I'll pick up the pace. So now out of nowhere, she's not even used to following you. Out of nowhere, in the first six minutes that she's got, she knows you, you're just, uh, the third time you're switching it up on her, that she has no idea what to expect. Anticipation that the dog is gonna do the same. But look what she's doing, she's, she's more focused. She's not he's focused. Like, I stay with this clown because exactly, you are a clown. He's moving all over the place, and I want to. I want to avoid the painful, uncomfortable correction. I know what his next move is going to be. I don't want a dog to be afraid and, and be like all spastic, trying to figure out what my next move is. I want to communicate to them, not through the leash, not through pops, not through pain. I want to actually communicate to them, talk to them, use my voice. Not and then oh, you know oh come 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 here over here sit down down sit blah 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 all that, but you know hey, we're turning this way hey let's go come this way whatever call their name let them know let them pay attention to you or teach them to pay attention to you rather, and let them know when you're moving. You're Don't be sneaky with your no. dog. Ouch ouch. Slave driver slave. Look at this. This is different 
when she started just a few minutes ago. Again? Ouch! And these are mild corrections. Like if you no, they're not, dumbass. Shut up. You're gonna do this from a scale of 1 to 10. Well, 10 is just abusive. Anything above a 2, to me, is abusive. All of, I mean, all of this is just unnecessary. <laughs> animal abuse is so easy to get away with if you say you're in the name of training. Unless the animal is bleeding or, or missing limbs. And even in that case, I mean, a dog could be tied up outside in 110 degree weather. Can be locked up in a crate out in the middle of a lawn with no shade, no water. And yet, still nothing is done about it. It's so easy to abuse animals, and nobody cares. I mean, a lot of people do care, but the right people don't care. This is maybe a two or a three. And you know what? This dog doesn't need any of it. She, he needs a 10, he needs a 12, he needs a 100 correction to be drugged behind his butt and see how he feels. He needs a correction. The dog doesn't. I guarantee if you put this on his neck and gave him anywhere between a 2 and a 3 or a 10, he would be crying. But no, he, he can do it to a dog because the dog doesn't fight back. The dog won't, won't, even if the dog's yelping in pain, people don't care. Here we go again. Look at that. You notice how she turned with me? Ouch. Ow. Oh, that was like a five. <sighs> All right. Well, we, we get it. This clown is just going to go back and forth, back and forth, being aggressive with his dog. You know, we don't need to watch any more of it. Um, this poor dog is going to spend at least two weeks with him. It's very unfortunate. But anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you got something from it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's other videos you would like me to cover in the future. Um, I know I've had people ask about me covering Caesar Milan in the past. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I, I try. I really try, but I get so worked up with him that I just, I'm gonna burst a blood vessel. And it's just not, not good for me. I just can't handle him. But um, I'm happy to do um, other reviews of any other videos you'd like to see, you know, as far as animal behavior or, um, you know, training methods and whatnot. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Say how to do to your little critters for me. Give them some kind of loving. And until next time, practice peace, patience, and positivity.